This video is sponsored by NVIDIA. Hello all, Sarah Dietschy rhymes with Peachy here. Over the past few months, you've probably seen a lot of videos about how to get rich using AI. Text, text, sound effect, fire. Emojis. And honestly, um, these videos have been very engaging, fantastic video editing, but it tends to leave you entertained, but not exactly informed on how to actually use these programs to, well, make your job easier and hence hopefully make more money. Maybe not the guarantee of millions of dollars, but hey, my job that I do make money from was a little bit easier. So I wanted to make this video. It's basically my part two to my first AI video I posted in January. In that video, I tried to stick to practical examples and really show you how some of this new tech works. But now I want to ignore all of the new and up and coming apps and focus on how I actually personally am using AI in my real creative workflows pretty much every day. Thank you Nvidia for sponsoring this video. This is the new Asus ZenBook Pro Duo 14 with the new GeForce RTX 4070 laptop GPU. By bringing GeForce RTX 40 series laptop GPUs to 14 inch laptops, Nvidia is enabling a new category of performance and efficiency. This ultra portable form factor enables creators to utilize all of the unique benefits of RTX and AI accelerations while on the go. It's perfect for creative apps that I'll be demoing AI workflows in today, like DaVinci Resolve and Premiere, but also great for gaming on the go. So more about this later. Okay, so if you know me, you probably know where I'm going to start. DaVinci Resolve, they just released the biggest update, 18.5. And I actually talked to someone from Resolve at NAB and they actually wanted to make this Resolve 19. They thought it was big enough to make it the next iteration of the program, but it was too late. So they just rolled it into 18.5, but it's that big of an update. The public beta is out now, and by the time that you're watching it, it'll probably be public very soon. So Resolve finally has automatic subtitles like Premiere. So that's Resolve kind of catching up to Premiere. So glad they added that. That's why I was actually still going over to Premiere uh, for social media content, the automatic subtitles. But the most important AI addition is it now has DaVinci Neural Engine powered text-based editing and also Premiere introduced that text-based editing magic. So rest in peace to script, like seriously, it's just dead. I assume programs like DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere, they're just gonna sit back and look at these AI video features from different companies and just see which ones pop off and then literally roll them out to their already huge customer base. So let me actually show you how this works. So this podcast is an hour. Let's see how long it takes for Resolve to transcribe the entire hour, only two minutes and 42 seconds. So as you guys can see, when I click on a certain word, it actually actually goes wherever that is in the video, which is pretty crazy. I have yeah. so much unlisted stuff. Though, I don't know if you know. And say you wanna make a clip, you can literally highlight the sentence you want and then press insert down here or the shortcut, I think I have it set to in, boom. And you can actually start cutting from the transcription. Now this is also in Premiere's beta version. If you wanna download it, you just go to your Creative Cloud app. It's in a little section on the left. And what is so great about Premiere's version is it actually detects silence. So if you see these three dots in between a sentence, that's where I pause. And it actually tells me, you pause for exactly 4.4 seconds. Check this out. Yeah, that I'm making, um, but you know, what are you gonna do? And you can go in here, select it, delete it, boom, and it live deletes. And what is so cool about Premiere is it actually understands really <laughs> well how to jump cut. And I actually started cutting this way and a ton of the takes, you wouldn't even have to go back and edit. So I wanted to make this video. Money from was a little bit easier. So I wanted to make this video. And in Premiere, you can go in and actually edit the transcript directly from the transcript window. Premiere really figured this out. And okay, props. 
props. Now a non-technical creative can make a first cut and hand it over to a more technical video editor for a final cut, and they're all working in the same program, which is super efficient. So epic, right? I feel like Premiere and Resolve are kind of like head to head, just fighting now, but you know, Resolve still has that thing where it doesn't crash a lot and it's just super snappy and fast. So if Premiere can, you know, solve that problem, then hey, Good on them. But before moving on from our most beloved NLEs, we still got a few more features to talk about. This relighting feature in Resolve is crazy. I feel like I'm using that word to describe everything, but it, it's it's awesome to have all of these cool AI features and programs that I already use, because my biggest pet peeve is, okay, hey, we're offering this super cool feature, but you have to upload everything to my web app, or it's just a whole new workflow. Having these workflows directly in the apps we already use is what I'm talking about. and that's why I'm actually using them in my everyday life. But anyways, I think we need a break. So shout out to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. This is the new Asus ZenBook Pro 14 inch with the new RTX 4070 GPU. The NVIDIA Studio platform supercharges your creative applications with their industry leading RTX GPUs that are paired with their exclusive driver technology. And they can pack all of that power into small portable form factors just like this ASUS ZenBook Pro 14 inch. So for you video editors like me, GPU acceleration in Resolve is everything. Not just for scrubbing through footage and playback, but also crushing those export times. So this laptop actually exported the hour and 10 minute 4K podcast that I was editing earlier in only 13 minutes and 26 seconds in Resolve and 17 minutes in Premiere. Like, psh. Okay, but what about the real magic though? What about AI magic mask? Let me tell you, the RTX 4070 gets to work. So I wanna mask myself out in the shot where I'm sitting at the desk. It's a 30 second clip. I'm gonna press the magic mask button, do the little plus button and roughly outline my person. I gotta minus some stuff out, but hey, we're good to go. Now I want it to do that mask of me, but for the full 30 second clip. So I'm gonna press this button here and we're we're just gonna wait a few seconds. So compared to other laptops in this size range, the RTX 4070 laptop GPU, well, it just dominates. Obviously this laptop shreds when it comes to video editing, AI workflows, but what about other creative workflows? If you do any kind of 3D rendering on the go, a dedicated NVIDIA GPU is, well, non-negotiable. Do you guys think I should do more stuff in Blender? I kind of do miss it after that one video. It was so hard. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the other thing that you're just not gonna do on the other laptops? Like, obviously, gaming. Well, not like legit gaming, anyways. <laughs> this is me playing Portal with RTX. It has AI-powered DLSS3, which enables lifelike virtual worlds with full ray tracing. Ray tracing is what simulates how light behaves in the real world in your game. Listen, I could go on forever telling you about more cool things NVIDIA is doing for creators. A couple examples like NVIDIA Broadcast that delivers cool AI features for your audio and camera. And also NVIDIA Canvas, which lets you rapidly create realistic landscape images with the ease of AI finger painting. So you'll just have to check out my links in the description below where you'll also find a link about all of the new GeForce RTX 40 series laptops for gamers and creators. Going back to what I was saying earlier about having the these uh, processes inside of our apps, not separate workflows. Let's talk about this auto editing thing. Say you have a multi-cam setup like what we're doing now, having AI splice it up for you, or maybe you're doing a podcast and you want automatic cuts done. There are a lot of AI apps that are doing this right now, so Gling is actually one. But again, I'm not the fan of this workflow. You upload all of your footage and it takes some time to cut and splice together, and then you export and export XML and then bring that into your NLE. Well, uh, shout out to Colin and Samir because they actually shouted out this plugin called Autopod that brings this directly into Premiere. Now this is what I'm talking about. So this is an hour long podcast. We have a wide angle at the top, then we have Thomas's angle, and then we have mine. This fully cut podcast was done by a AI plugin. 
not me. The only thing you have to do before is synchronize the video clips with the audio clips, just like you would do if you were going to edit a podcast or an interview with multiple angles. Okay, so we have everything laid out. We're gonna go up to window extensions, autopod multi cam editor. You're gonna have this of course, if you have downloaded the plugin. And then watch the magic happen. Oh my gosh, guys, it's happening. Only took a minute and a half. Look at this, it's cutting it live. Look at how crazy this is. How quick it's just cutting the entire podcast. This is an hour podcast. I guess the easiest way to say it is I help students be better students. Uh, and I also just help people be more productive in general. Productivity hacks. I come across your videos so many times without actually knowing that you're the same person. Really? And then, me very much about <laughs> and then I think, you know, by the fourth or fifth one, um, like, oh, this is wow. a subscribe. <laughs> but it helps. Wow. Just going back to Thomas for the laugh. Because I think there's so many Okay, how are we doing? I know I started off with the intense video editing, but I think that is where I'm most excited about uh, saving time with AI because I don't need to be editing videos for 10 to 15 hours. I'm just, I'm tired, okay? So I'm excited and we are going to continue on. We are going to go into a lighter uh, creative flow going from video to now text generation. It is what everyone on the Twitter is talking about. So many tweet threads, so many thread boys and girls. I can't believe all of this actually made me download Microsoft Edge, but here we are. If you're curious what the difference is between ChatGPT uh, just through OpenAI's website and also the ChatGPT integration via Microsoft Edge is on Edge, Microsoft's web browser, it uses current data and it uses the internet data to inform the responses. While the responses in ChatGPT 3.5 or 4, uh, you're not gonna have the latest information informing these responses. This is why ChatGPT 4 is really great for code, for programmers correcting maybe errors that you have. It's very smart, but it's not necessarily going to be able to just pull out recent events to inform its answers, if that makes sense. I've actually used ChatGPT a ton to help inform like, hey, I heard on this podcast, uh, this anecdote, where is that from? Uh, show me the interview where that is from. And that's actually not the best way to use it. And you only discover these things once you actually play with it, you tweet things, you have people's feedback, whether it's uh, nice or often not nice, but that is the best way to learn these things. So I was like, oh, okay, I hear the story about Steve Jobs all the time and I was wondering where is it from is it from his biography is it from an interview and chat GPT 3.5 actually gave me an answer and 4 did not and I was like what what's going on and this led me down a rabbit hole and it led me to uh, this thing called hallucinations so chat GPT actually has what they call hallucinations and will just give you answers that sound good but they're not actually entirely accurate again I did not know this until I started digging deeper so this is like a big disclaimer when you're using these tools to one, verify your information, but two, you gotta start with like legitimate human input. And this is why I have actually a big problem uh, going back to the start of this video with all of these videos saying, hey, you just have to do this, that, and that. And these AI tools are gonna do everything for you. Sit back and enjoy, cash and all of the money. No, there's still work you gotta do either on the front end or the back end. So uh, this is actually how I use text generation in a productive way that saves me time and also helps me do things that I wouldn't do before. Writing copy for my website, writing copy for my merch. This is actually a real life example that you can start using today. And this is actually the only useful video clip that I'm gonna use uh, from when I tried to film this video three weeks ago. I need a copy for the new really sick Stay Peachy Trucker House. And I started with, I'm trying to sell a cool trucker hat to creatives who are editing videos or filming videos all of the time. Write a cheeky three sentence description for a trucker hat that is being sold with the words stay peachy on it. Talk about how comfy it is and how quality the material is. I select that block of text. I say, ask AI and I can say multiple things, improve writing, make longer. Um, but really you can just type it in. You could say, this is going to be a description for the hat on my website 
eight, make it four sentences long. AI is writing. Okay, boom, and it spits it out. That's not the exact uh, prompt that I used, but you can see here below, I went through a few of them and I changed the prompt each time because it didn't nail it perfectly. Um, and I kind of combined both of these outputs to something that I wrote uh, down below. I added my own spin on it. Are you tired of bad hair days while editing or filming your videos? Fear not, my friend, for the Stay Peachy Trucker Hat is here to the rescue. Made with premium materials that feel as soft as a peach. That's something that AI came up with that I'm too dumb to come up with. And that was actually super helpful. This hat will make you the talk of the town, or at least blah, blah, blah. You know, you get it. I added the sarcasm at the end because, you know, I'm a very sarcastic person. One more straightforward example uh, is I'm redoing my website and there's like a uh, page for kind of the projects that I've done in the past, like archive projects. And so I just had this as the before. Hustle NY was a networking event for creators at NYC 2016 through 2019. I highlighted it, said ask AI, and in the prompt, I just said, make this more exciting. I got this whole block of text that was pretty good. And then I went in and edited it to edit, edited it. <laughs> and, and edited it, I, how do you say that? I made some changes to where it's more of my voice and this is what I ended up with. Hustle and Why was the ultimate networking event for creators in the Big Apple. The event brought together some of the most talented artists and innovators in NYC from 2016 to 2019 and provided an incredible opportunity to connect, collaborate, and create. Holy cow, okay, I am not a writer. And the difference from the first line to the last is so huge. And a lot of that is attributed to our AI overlords. The first sentence is actually something I was gonna put in the website, like in the little description, cause I just, I didn't care. Um, and so, you know, I took an extra few minutes to do this and wow, I'm so glad I did. So those are some just concrete examples on how tools like ChatGPT and Notion AI are really changing the game for writing copy and making uh, writers more editors, right? You're going to spend less time thinking about the right words to say, and you're just going to start, you're going to edit what the AI gives you. Okay. So I hope this video uh, gets your brain going, but not just that. I hope it actually enables you to hop into these apps that you already use and start using these features. I want my videos to be entertaining, but I want them to be useful to you. And if you haven't watched my first video, I'll link it up here. I never remember what side it is. If you've heard about people using journey and all these tools, I actually show you how to use them. I'm always trying to find this balance between new people that are discovering my channel and they want the basics and then the fancy tech people that already know the basics and want to go deeper. So apologies if, you know, sometimes there are cars in the background making noise. So apologies if sometimes I'm too on the basic end or maybe too on the deep end. Um, it's just a balance that hopefully um, I am balancing. Word salad. This is a sign we need to end this video. So thank you so much for watching. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos about tech and creativity. And more importantly, NVIDIA, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to check out this specific laptop or any of their amazing NVIDIA studio creator laptops for creators and gamers, check out my link in the description below. And until next time, stay peachy. Okay, bye.